So, are you going to go my way? <laughs> Hi ho everybody. This is Grammy Mary and you are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on reallibertymedia.com channel 3. Kind of like the uh, Tootsie Pop little thing. Ha one, ha two, ha three and it's me. <laughs> Oh my goodness, how y'all doing? Oh, it's Friday. Weeha! Oh, you know, I probably ought to say, um, we are also on the RLM Spreaker channel and on um, RLM TuneIn and RLM Internet Radio. So hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody out there that's listening in, and howdy doody to all you newbies out there. Love y'all. Let me turn my volume up just a skosh. Because I see that I'm just a little on the low side. Hello, rascal. My kitty cat is wanting to come help again. Because she's ever so helpful. Or she thinks. Okay, uh, let's see. Who do I have here? Uh, Checking out. um, (laughs) Oh, okay. I'm a lone frog. Hey, that's funny. I'm checking out over here in the UCY chat. I'm going to see how long I can keep this going because, yeah, uh, for those of you that are new here, everybody else that's used to listening to me knows I'm out in the boonies and my internet is a tin can with string and uh, duct tape. So um, I'm going to stay. I'm going to hang out here as long as I can. But (laughs) if I start losing signal or dropping signal or something, I'm going to have to start dropping some windows that I have open. So. Until then, hey there, hi there, ho there, again. Um, what? Oh, <laughs> thanks, Grim. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, if I can sound like Monty Python, woohoo, cool beans. Okay, um, <laughs> Jerry Clower, really? Seriously? Oh, my Lord. Um, okay. Let me say hey there, hi there to everybody. Over here on Fakie Book, let me look over here real quick first. I see the lovely Mary B is over here. Not real sure who else I see. Scotty is over here. Hi there, darling. How you doing? Uh, usually don't get a whole heck of a lot from over here on Fakie Book, but I like to tell them hey there anyway. Um, and um, over in UCY, there's lots and lots of people over there. How many of you are listening in? I have no idea, but... Hi there, love ya, welcome, thanks for joining me, and uh, be prepared, because, yeah, this is pretty much it. (laughs) I giggle, I read news, I make fun of people, and a lot of times I make fun of myself, so hey, you know, it's okay. Um, let's see, and over in the R, oh, let me go see on, on that effing site, Freedoms Network, where, um, yeah, Grimmy is the guy that keeps the place running, and Bo Diddy is his, um, yeah, cohort in crime, I guess would be a good way of putting that. Thank you guys for providing that site for us. Uh, I see London, I see France, I don't see a whole hell of a lot going on over there right now, except for Grim, and I saw the lovely Penny was over here, and the lovely Miri B, and Rose Bandit, so hey there guys, how you doing? Now, over to the RLM, hey there, I see right up top my missionary man once again, (laughs) sweetheart, you know, you're going to have to try another position. That's just all there is to it because, you know, you get kind of stagnant that way. I also see Barman is following very closely behind, and Barman is the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Right behind Barman is the lovely Beth A. How you doing, darling? How's things up in your neck of the world? Has the sun set already? Yeah, days are getting a wee bit shorter, and whoo, it was wonderful out here today instead of the 90 plus with the convection oven wind that we've had of late. Today was in the lower 70s, so I, um, yeah, I almost thought, damn, it did me no good to shave my legs. (laughs) 
I wore longer short pants today and it just really didn't do any good. I actually had to put a jacket on inside work. Okay. Uh, too much information, I'm sure. Cowboy Tech is here. Hey there, sweetheart. How you doing? I hope you're hearing pleasant voices. And I have no idea why you would share the Trogs Wild thing on my post. <laughs> Not a freaking clue. <sighs> yeah, I also see Grimmy is over here. Hey there, darling. How you doing? Grimner and the lovely lady that's closely behind him. Uh, the lovely Moose Girl will be on later on this evening for the Freakers Ball, so be sure to either stick around or come back for that because that's always entertaining. And looky there, the lovely Kate is here. Hey, sweetheart, um, how hot did it get in your neck of the woods today? I know down there in Texas, um, it gets pretty damn hot. Um, hey there, Beth. Oh, sun just set. Oh, Elton John. No, I won't sing it because if I sing it, y'all will go, oh, man, I need therapy. No, I, I won't do that to you. Uh, but I will say, oh, I won't let the sun go down on you, Beth. I promise. Um, I also see Trust No One Is Here, who is still being a prude and a fuddy-duddy and will not let me say, Darth Rome's. Although, I'm going to say it anyway, just because I can, because I'm a obnoxious little twit sometimes. I also see Chalcedonia is over here, although Chalcedonia is being strong and silent again. I hate when that happens. And looky there, the lovely Chloe is here. Hey there, woman. How you doing this evening? I hope everything's going awesome in your neck of the world. I be Don C is here as well. And uh, hey, hon, have you listened to Flip Flops today? <laughs> That's a song that I kind of got him hooked on. And yeah, that the part that the gal sings, yeah, I I get my catch myself wandering around work singing it. And usually when I do, my co-workers look at me weird. I have no idea why. It's not like they don't do that all the time anyway. But, <clears throat> looky there. Java, 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 Java Doctor 2. The new and improved version is here. How's that new version of you, Java Doctor 2? Is she sleeping all night yet? Well, thank you, cowboy. I just now saw that. Thank you kindly, darling. Um... I hope she's sleeping all night. I also see Juana Taco is here. And you know what? Although that does sound absolutely yummy, I'm probably going to have to take care of my uh, taco fix. Uh-oh. I am Lone Frog has left the building. Damn it. I hate when that happens. Dar sorry, darling. Um, I'm going to have my taco fix on Sunday because I'm going to be meeting up with my grandbabies as they're on their way to go spend a week with grandpa so uh yeah i will get to go they're taking me out for a late birthday lunch and that's just pretty darn cool i got to choose tacos or at least qdoba um but this evening yeah i had cold pizza <laughs> and i am blown frog is back again um i also let's see what else did i have oh yeah if i get a little bit on the more wacky than i normally am kind of just know that i today i was jonesing for powdered sugar donuts and I broke down and i had one <laughs> so if i get to buzzing yeah you'll know why uh i also see p bunion is here and i still have not seen your blue ox honey i hear you have a green deer I want to see your blue ox. No, that's not code for anything really weird or kinky. And looky there, Alias is here from down under. How's things down there, sweetheart? I hope you are not freezing your patootie off. I'm here, at least physically, mentally, that's still up for grabs. And looky there, I am a lone frog has joined us again. Yay! Thank you for coming on over, sweetheart. And Carl is here. There's another new face. Hey there, sweetie. Welcome aboard. I hope you're enjoying it so far. Um, and looky there, the lovely Mary B, who is also from Down Under. How you doing, sweetie? I hope it's not too cold for you. I hope you got some warm or warmer weather because I got cooler. So did we do one of those cosmic flip-flop things to where it cooled down for me, warmed up for you? Inquiring minds want to know. 
And finally, to round out the crew over here in the RLM chat, the one, the only, the road dogging. Road dogging. I hope I said that right, hon. If I didn't, well, mm, tough shit because I have a tendency to mispronounce a lot of stuff. <laughs> so, even things that I really, really mean to say right and then I still screw it up because, well, that's the way I roll because, <laughs> yeah, it's just... What? Whoa, dude, Meister, Freedom's Network is like doing a major flashy thing. What's going on? What? Okay. Cool your jets. Jeez, oh, Pete. Okay. Um, I got to go to this. This is something that a friend of mine shared. It's something that I shared, oh, cripes, three years ago over on Fakie Book. And a friend of mine was perusing some of the silliness that I have shared over the years and uh, reposted, re shared, whatever the hell. And as I read it, I thought, oh my God, that's just too cute. I need to read that tonight. <clears throat> so here we go. An atheist was seated. Blah, blah, blah. See? Already. Already. I'm only 13 minutes in and already my tongue has gone on strike. Go figure. An atheist was seated next to a little girl on an airplane, and he turned to her and said, Do you want to talk? Flights go quicker if we strike up a conversation with our fellow passengers. The little girl, who had just started to read her book, replied to the total stranger, Well, what would you like to talk about? Oh, I'm glad, Mary B. I am so glad it's more pleasant down there. Cool. See, it did work. It was a cosmic thing. Brainwaves working. You know that does work. They've proved it. Which is another thing that I will get to here in just a little bit. But back to this. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> okay. So she said, what would you like to talk about? And uh, the atheist said, oh, I don't know. How about why there is no God or no heaven or hell or no life after death? Yeah. He said that smugly to her. You know how those smug people are, don't you? I know I can be that way occasionally. Okay, she said. Those could be interesting topics, but uh, let me ask you a question first. A horse, a cow, and a deer all eat the same stuff. Grass. Yet... A deer excretes little pellets while a cow turns out a flat patty, which it's not really flat. Trust me, I'm from Kansas, and no, they're not flat. They're flat-ish. <laughs> Although Kansas is flatter than a cow patty. Okay, and a horse produces clumps. Why do you suppose that is? Well, the atheist, visibly surprised by the little girl's intelligence, thinks about it and says, Hmm, I have no idea. To which little, the little girl replies, Well, do you really feel qualified to discuss God, heaven, and hell, or life after death when you don't know shit? And she went back to reading her book. <laughs> now that would be my granddaughter because yeah she comes by it honestly mm -hmm. from my mother <laughs> and I want to be my mother I want when I grow up I want to be just like my mother which really terrifies everybody that knows my mother and knows me and actually my uncle um says too late <laughs> So there you go. It's all good. It really is. Honest and for true. Okay. Um, let's see here. Got to check something. Okay. That's good. And yes. Hi, RLM 96191. So let's see. That's 10, 15, 10, 15, 25, 2 and 5. Hi, RLM 7. I always, yeah, because... 96191 is entirely too much for me to say. I might stumble over something and hurt myself. So, uh, RLM, what did I say? <laughs> seven. Seven. RLM seven. There you go. That works. Uh, any Zoom function? What? 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 Hi, Java. Okay. 
test passed? Did you study? Who who had a test? Um. La la la. Okay, I'm gonna get to something instead of d abusing your eardrums. Um, let's go with this. Nope, no, not that one first. I gotta go with this one first because I just think this is hilarious. And this is actually something that, especially now, I would probably do. <laughs> just saying. Because, yeah, that's the way I roll. Okay, this, uh, I was digging around in my pocket, by the way, and I found this little piece of lint that was just loitering towards the top. This is from thevalleyreport.com. Woman arrested for defecating on boss's desk after winning the lottery. How many of you have pondered doing that very same thing? <sighs> oh, okay, let's have a moment of silence. Okay, that's enough. This was in New York, by the way. A 41-year-old woman had the winning lottery ticket worth over three m m million with an M on Friday night. But she showed up to work anyway on Monday to deliver one last package. The courier company had no idea of her winnings. I knew something was wrong because I came back from lunch and the door to my office was closed, said the manager. <laughs> I slowly opened the door to discover the woman with her pants around her ankles, hunched over on my desk like a hippopotamus slash cheetah dropping a massive poo on my desk <laughs> she shot her head towards me and locked eyes i was frozen in shock and fear in my peripheral vision i saw a huge mud monkey sliming <laughs> I've never, I've never heard it called that. That's a funny phrase. I saw a huge mud, <laughs> mud monkey sliming out of her butt like a Play-Doh fun factory. <laughs> oh, God, how funny. Wow, honey, you should have done that and not got caught. I mean, seriously, think about these things. Jeez, it was worth it, the woman said on her rest. On Friday, when I realized I'd hit the lotto, I knew this would be the first thing I would do. Wow, did you, it must have taken you a while if it was after lunch to, I'd have been prepped and ready before. <laughs> I hit up the Mexican food truck. Oh, wow. I'm surprised he didn't smell that before he opened the door. Woo! <laughs> okay, try and finish this. I hit up the Mexican food truck and saved my dumps all week. Oh, good Lord, did you look like Richard Nixon by the time you... Wow. <clears throat> or all weekend, excuse me, but still. Ooh, I would have been very uncomfortable. I was shuffling around like a death row inmate, <laughs> trying to not explode. <laughs> I've been putting up with this guy's shit for years, and it's time he put up with some of mine. <laughs> oh, that's freaking priceless. Oh, darling. Wow. I got to say good job, and yet um, I got to take away points because, sweetie, you should have done this while he was away so that... Um, <clears throat> He would not have caught you in the act. Okay. <laughs> that is just too funny. Oh, my Lord. Oh, good job, darling. Good job. Although, yeah, next time, well, there won't be a next time. $3 million. Have you seen the statistics on that stuff? How many people, when they win the lottery... Um, within just a couple of years are filing for bankruptcy. It's absolutely crazy. It's like they go out there and, and, you know, it's, I have a winning lottery ticket and your brain just falls right out your head. It does. Seriously. I mean, you know, within a couple of years, I've read about this stuff and, you know, people winning bazillions of dollars, which to me, anything over a hundred grand is a bazillion dollars. Because a hundred grand, I could retire. I could live out here in the boonies and tell the rest of the world to kiss my grits. But, uh, yeah. 
you know, like within two years, they're filing bankruptcy and they are so freaking in debt. Of course, they also get the annuity. So they get the lovely little payments that come in. No, 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 no. Don't get the annuity. Don't do that. Go ahead. I mean, their Uncle Sugar is going to be digging in your pocket anyway. But you got to stop and think about this. If you invested $1, $2, however much you invested, and you got that kind of an exchange on your $1 or $2 investment, say you won, oh, let's see, what was it last time I looked, which has been a while, it was like $72 million for whatever the lottery is around here. And, uh, okay, spend two bucks, and you win $72 million, and you go, bada bing, bada boom, I am taking it all. Taking the lump sum. Okay, number one, right off the top, Gooberman, Uncle Sugar, he's got to have his cut because, you know, that's the way the mafia works. And uh, so half of it's gone phew, just right off the bat. But still, 72 mil, you take away half of that. What does that bring you down to, what, 36 mil yet that you got to, oh, oh, damn. If that's all I've got, ah, oh, that would just totally suck <laughs> 36 mil are you shitting me I would disappear of course I would find me some handsome stud to go disappear with because well that kind of money I could find me a handsome stud but <laughs> I would go I'd go buy that place in Colorado that whomever is trying to sell on Craigslist that's what I'd do and yeah I would have me a good time but um <clears throat> You know, people, they, they get that stuff. They get the annuity, so it's basically you get an allowance, and so Uncle Sugar is taking a chunk out every freaking year, which Uncle Sugar is going to do that anyway, unless you disappear. You know, if you're really good at disappearing. but um, And I would give a lot of it away, too. You know, I don't, I'd don't. i keep maybe five mil for me just for, just for mad money, but the rest of it I would just start, you know, giving it away to people. Because really, you can only spend so much. I mean, seriously. You know, I would not need that kind of money. So, you know, start giving shit away. I'd give Grimmy some. I'd give Moosey some. I'd definitely set up my grandkids with some money. I don't know if I'd give my children any. <laughs> oh, I would. I would. And I would give all my siblings some. But, yeah, then I would just kind of, you know, I would be like that crazy Santa kind of guy. You know, just go out and get like a wad of hundreds and then just start walking down the street handing them out, you know, just because, because it would be fun, you know, I think so at least, but, uh, yeah, I probably would, um, uh, definitely consider taking a massive dump on my boss's desk just because, just because, because, uh, yeah. He is the shits. So I'm, you know, as ye sow, so shall ye reap. <laughs> but um, I thought that was extremely amusing. Of course, then again, I'm easily amused. So there you go. Uh, and here we go. I'm going to go ahead and share this over on that effing site as well. And let's go put it over on Fakey Book just because I ain't got nothing else to do, right? Right. And I know quite a few people over there that will just laugh their arse off. <laughs> you know, that would almost be worth buying a lottery ticket for. <laughs> if I could be guaranteed, booyah, bonus round. Let's see, I'll put that over here too. Um, yes. Oh, I always read stories on air, honey. <laughs> and it is a satire site. Oh, thank you very much, Tomato Tomato. But, yeah, I'm just this, yeah. And I interject an awful lot when I read stories. I don't ever read them verbatim, ever, 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 because, well, <laughs> I just don't. It's just the way it works. Okay, uh, I'm going to go back to my pocket, dig around in there, because I know I've got a couple more lint balls that I have got to get to. Just got to. Here's another one that I found extremely amusing, and it goes in the butt hurt category. For those of you that get massive emotional boo-boos, 
That butt just puckers so damn much that even if you were to win Powerball, there is no freaking way you could take a dump on your boss's desk because <laughs> that butt is so puckered up, you wind up looking like Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Egad! Okay, from foxnews.com, in their politics session, which, you know, politics, many bloodsuckers, yeah, they fit the bill, don't they? Apparently, a federal agency says that wearing the don't tread on me hat could be racial harassment. Don't you think that they have uh, overcharged that race card, just a skosh? I think it has exceeded its limit. I think so. You know, all these And that's how, huh? I don't get how that could be a racial thing. But then again, I don't get easily butthurt. You know, unless I fall on my arse or something. Uh, that's usually about, or or if I back into something. Because I'm not exactly the most graceful person around. I always wake up with a new bruise going, how'd I do that? <laughs> and I usually never remember how I do it either. Usually never. Wow, that didn't sound right either, did it? Okay, <clears throat> Wearing a Gadsden flag hat to work could be considered racial harassment. This is according to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, one of those alphabet soup brigades that everybody knows and loves. The government body that oversees hostile work environments, harassment claims against federal agencies. Okay, I don't work for a federal agency, so I'm just going to give you a single finger salute right now. How's that sound? works for me. The iconic flag, which originates from the Revolutionary War, features coiled snake above the words, don't tread on me. In recent years, it's become a favorite symbol of the Tea Party movement and conservative activists, which the Tea Party, uh, they got left dangling, pretty much soggy, and no goody left in them. They, they pretty much steeped themselves out, and now you, the only thing they're good for is to throw in the compost pile. That's just my opinion. Earlier this year, the EEOC, that almost makes me feel like E-I-E-I-O, e, the EEOC received a complaint from a Shelton, which is an African-American. African-American. Hmm. I thought we were all Americans. You know, if you didn't actually migrate here from Africa, I don't think African-American applies to you. I think you're just American if you were born here. Oh, there I go having an independent thought again. Damn it! I hate when that happens. Oh, well. This person charged that his employer, a federal government, or the federal government, had subjected him to racial discrimination when a co-worker repeatedly wore a cap with the insignia of the Gadsden flag. <laughs> Where's my safe space? Shelton, which that's not his real name, although I think it's rather appropriate, Shelton, said he found the cap to be racially offensive because the man who designed it in 1775, Christopher Gadsden, was a slave owner and because the insignia was a historical indicator of white resentment against blacks stemming largely from the Tea Party. Okay, sweetheart, if you're going to be throwing out historical indicators, here's a little history for you. Way back when you're saying that we're the ones that started all this bullshit, which, excuse me, my ancestors actually migrated here as well. Um, all except for those of Cherokee blood. And yet, um, oh, yes, Grim, I do. You know, I also, I'm going to be getting to it here in just a little bit, but yeah, Native Americans are, the only reason they're Native here is because they've been here longer. They migrated here too. So, you know, all of this BS out there of let's be divisive, shall we? I'm a Native American. I'm a, 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 I'm a me. And that's good enough. Okay? If it ain't, tough patooties. But back to this little history class for you. Shelton, 
um, in order for blacks to become slaves over here, they were slaves over in Africa. And you know who their slave owners were? Other blacks. Yeah. Another little fun fact that you may not know, but someone needs to shove up your uh, butt puckered pie hole, give you that lovely little historical suppository, is to uh, let you know that uh, the Irish were slaves as well. And when you look at a lot of the documentation from way back then, pre your birth, as in you did not have to suffer through any of this bullshit. Right now, we're all slaves, but uh, not in the context you're talking about. But the Irish were actually worth less than black slaves on average. So, you want to get all butt pucker and you want to call out historical evidence? Get your facts right, hun. Okay? In the meantime, do I need to call you a ambulance for that emotional boo-boo that you got? I say you need to grow up. Start acting like an adult. Even though adulting is hard, you need to do it. Okay? Apparently, the EEOC, which is a governmental entity that specifically caters to people who have perpetual butt hurt. Constantly running around with, I have an emotional boo-boo. Where's my safe space? I wonder if they drive a wambulance. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> they acknowledged that the flag did not originate with the Tea Party. Oh, shock! <laughs> and was created centuries ago. In a non-racial context. Holy crap! Where's the other shoe? It, it's going to fall. The other shoe's going to fall. I'm waiting for it. However, the commission also found that the Gadsden flag could be interpreted to convey racially tinged messages in some contexts. In other words, oh, let's be very ambivalent about this might maybe kind of sort of almost possibly should be if such a thing could be it would be if you really really contort yourself into Mr. Gumby then maybe it was citing an example from 2014 shooting spree in which white supremacists draped Gadsden flags over the bodies of two murdered police officers. Okay, just because some freaking moron used it does not mean it applies to everyone that flies it. Because, quite frankly, that's the only flag I will proudly fly. And as far as I'm concerned, any flag is just a freaking piece of cloth with either a picture on it or words on it or something like that. It's cloth. It's a symbol. It's used to make you go, my piece of cloth's better than yours. I'm going to kill you because your piece of cloth is over close to my piece of cloth. Really? Wow, what kind of mentality comes up with that bullshit? <sighs> oh, well. Oh, and by the way, Mr. Gadsden, no, didn't own slaves. Just going to put that out there for you as well. So, all you lovely little wanny wanny woo woos. <sighs> okay, I got to share my little emoticon, then I'll put this over here. Um... Okay, Graham, I got to look at that because if, yeah, I didn't look at the picture. I just saw that you'd said something. So let me look real fast. And then, oh, hey, yeah, Graham, kind of like that. I need to get me one of those hats. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I would wear it while I'm out on my riding mower, puttering around the yard. You know I would. Okay, oop. RLM 96191 or RLM 7, however you wish to say it, has dropped out of the building. Um, oh, Graham, seriously? Seriously? Do I want to go there? <laughs> 
Oh, Grimmy. Okay, I'm catching up on the chat. Grimmy says that uh, he only needs 10 mil. There you go. Java says he'd settle for one, which I would too. Hell, if I were to, okay, Powerball tickets out here are two bucks. So if I was to win my two bucks back, I'd be going, booyah, I'm a winner. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> okay, what's this one, hon? Oh, good Lord. Okay, oh, hey. Yeah, I'm going to go there. I'm going to go. You know I will. You know I will because I'm shameless like that. From the smoking gun. Thank you, Grim. Uh, let me make sure. Did I get the Gadsden thing shared over? Oh, yeah, I did because I shared, I shared it on my bitch page over on Facebook. Which my bitch page, anybody that's, um, I don't post on there a whole hell of a lot, but I'm getting, I'm kind of getting more into the, the post on there again. But if, you know, if you wish to, it's uh, the beer and ale party over on Fakey Book, and um, which stands for Begin Electing Ethical Representation and Against Legalized Extortion. Although I probably ought to just shorten it down to the ale party against legalized extortion, which is anything to do with gooberment. And, uh, yeah, occasionally I post a lot of shit and then I'll go for like a month and not post anything because, <laughs> yeah, I'm too busy just putting it on my personal page and saying, fuck it. Ooh, F-bomb, F-bomb. Damn. I went all night Friday night without a single F-bomb. Did you notice that? I was such an overachiever. And then I blew it. <laughs> okay, back to this. From the smoking gun. Obviously, his gun wasn't smoking or he wouldn't be calling the cops. <clears throat> a 90-year-old Massachusetts man was arrested for soliciting a prostitute after he called police to report that the woman stole a piece of jewelry after he paid her $100 to perform a sex act. Wow, honey. Well, you just go for it, darling, because you're 90 years old and you can still get it up. Go for it, dude. Hmm... When cops told Nicholas Salerno that he would face a criminal charge of admitting to hiring a hooker, the uh, <clears throat> nonagenarian, is that how you say that? Na 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 na, na 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 na. Okay, keep going. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. I'm 90 years old for Christ's sake. Hey, dude. <laughs> That's two F-bombs in short order. As detailed in the marvelous Dennis Police Department report, Salerno dialed cops in late June to report that he had paid Karen Pro uh, Proia. Wow. He paid Karen, who is 48, for a sexual encounter in his home. Salerno said that he got her first name and phone number from a friend who reported that he had... Um, Paid a girl a hundred dollars for a blowjob. You know, I still haven't gotten a significant, or not a significant, but a sufficient answer to my inquiring mind's question on that. Why is it called a blowjob when you don't blow? Is it because if you called it a suck job, nobody do it because everybody says oh, that's a suck job? Fuck you. <laughs> Why don't you call it a Hoover or a Eureka moment? Because that pretty much conveys the same idea. And people know what Hoover and Eureka do. <laughs> Moving along. <laughs> Salerno said that he paid her $100 for oral sex. So did, did she give you Polish oral sex? Stand across the room and say, fuck you. Obviously, she did. Upon her departure from his home, Salerno said that he discovered a gold chain was missing from atop a bedroom dresser. Salerno said he waited a week to report the theft because he wanted to give Karen a chance to bring the necklace back. And he wanted a repeat performance of that Eureka moment. <laughs> When asked if he knew the woman's last name, Salerno told police, All I know is her phone number and that she lives in an apartment across from the Christmas tree shop. <laughs> Merry Christmas! Wow. I wonder if Santa Claus knows her. Because that would totally dispel that myth of him only coming once a year, wouldn't it? <laughs> 
Oh, Salerno's chain, police noted, was later recovered from the local firm that buys and sells gold and coins. A worker told cops that she had recently pawned the item. Salerno and Karen, who was charged with prostitution and larceny, were arraigned Tuesday on misdemeanor counts. Both defendants entered not guilty pleas. According to the district court clerk, the charge against Salerno was subsequently dismissed and his case is now listed as closed. But Karen is next scheduled for a September 1 court appearance. Uh oh! Now see, this whole interchange right here, I think it's a no harm, no foul, except for her swiping his chain. Now, yeah, okay. First she jerked your chain, then she stole your chain. You know, t maybe she's being an overachiever. I don't know. But, um, you know, when you steal someone's shit, yeah, I can see why, okay, get pissy. But if you're just talking about, you know, they, it was a barter. He wanted a service. She was willing to provide a service for a luc lucrative uh reimbursement of her time and expertise <laughs> and uh well okay maybe not lucrative to some people but shit a hundred bucks for five minutes work <laughs> damn extrapolate that out to an hour uh-huh <laughs> Oh, Grammy, I, wow, I could get a whole lot of one-liners out of this one, but now nah, I'm not going to milk it any more than I already have. <laughs> Although that is quite funny, hun. <laughs> oh, my. You know, props to Gramps, because, yeah, at 90, he can still you can go for it, dude. I know a lot of guys out here my age, which is on, uh, yeah, <clears throat> in the 50s, <laughs> that just playing can't without having that little blue pill, and it's like, oh, honey, what kind of other medication are you on? Because seriously, it's the other medication that's fucking with you. It really is. Get away, step away from big pharma. Go back to natural things, and then it will come back naturally. Trust me, hun. Um, okay, I gotta... <laughs> okay. Thank you, Grammy. That that was just... I haven't done a naughty story in a long time, so thank you ever so much. <laughs> Hi, Michael! Long time no see. Okay. Uh, I gotta put this on Facebook, because that's just funny. <sighs> and this you know this is that's probably some of this weird shit that i post on facebook that's probably part of why i didn't win in the primary on tuesday too because <laughs> i i yeah i'll share just about anything just about and you know people can be so stuffy oh lord <laughs> I, I, I just, I got nothing to say on this one over on Facebook. I'm just going to share the link and just call it good. Cause it's like, wow, that's just hilarious. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see how many triggers a day. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to. <laughs> oh, sorry. What what was that? Oh, hi, um, Hopper, honey. I'm over on RLM. I don't know if you can handle it. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! What? Oh shit! Okay, should I put that over here? Yes, I will. I will put that link over here, just so y'all can have fun with it too. Okay. Um, and I'm going to go back to my pocket now, seeing as how Grimmy's already given me something funny to laugh at. And a couple of these other ones I've also gotten from Grimm um, throughout the week that I hadn't gotten to. And it's like, I'm going to right now, I'm going to try and, f ow, 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 
rascal baby. I love you, sweetheart, but claws, yes, the girls are just fine. You don't need to puncture them. Um, I don't think, did I do the, the Hitlery float the other day? I don't remember what I do, guys. Help me. Help me. <laughs> No, I don't think I did, because it's a day after. Okay, here we go. This is a good one. This is so funny. I have been telling people since, like, forever that I think good old cankle queen herself, shitlery Clinton, shrillery, whatever the hell you want to call her, um, <clears throat> needs to be booked in for an extended stay at the Gray Bar Hilton, and someone needs to provide her with one of those ever so attractive, either neon orange or neon pink jumpsuits, you know, the kind that shows every stain in the book, which I don't know if any, how many of you saw that stain photo op I show, shared a couple weeks back of shitlery. <laughs> Apparently, she had meet, reached maximum capacity and never trust a fart. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Especially not if you've had Mexican food. I know, rascal. I love you too, sweetie, but you can't help tonight. Okay, from the DailyMail.co.uk. Democrats slam mean parade float depictor, depict, blah, 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 that too, depicting the cankle queen herself, Hitlery Clinton, in prison wearing a jumpsuit after children pelt it with water balloons. <laughs> Why in the hell didn't anybody give me the memo on that? I would have driven to see that and brought a bucket of water balloons. Just, and it was in Arcadia, Iowa. Of all places. That's not that far of a drive for me. I could have made it. Damn it. <sighs> Apparently, <clears throat> demon craps have slammed a parade float depicting the old cankle queen herself wearing an orange jumpsuit behind bars with children pelting her. Politicians in Arcadia, Iowa, said that the design was inappropriate and were concerned some of the youngsters may have thought it was mean. Really? Really? Did you see the pictures? Did you take a gander at the video? <laughs> no. Those kids are going, this is fun. Is that a real person in there? I'm going to nail her ass. Because that's what kids do. You give them water balloons, and if you're even remotely close, they're going to nail you. Adam Corky dressed up as a presidential nominee and was, oh, and it was a person. Ha <laughs> ha, funny. Um, and was wheeled through the streets in a cage. Children then grabbed the balloons and hurled them at the former Secretary of State, which, yeah, shitlery is all wet. I get the cosmic significance of that. She's behind bars and a fence. A chicken, well, it's not chicken wire, but eh, whatever. And that orange jumpsuit is ever so much more attractive than the grandma curtain things that she's been wearing of late. Have you seen? Who in the hell is her stylist? My Lord, you would think all the money that she has absconded with, she could wear something or have someone design something for her that didn't look like a 1960s Hoover vacuum bag. I mean, seriously. At one point, a little blonde girl was seen cocking back her arm, ready to launch a pink balloon filled with water. Well, okay, that's the photo op. And then, and she's not so little of a girl. Oh, no, this is a different girl, the picture I'm seeing. But, yeah, you caught her pre-throw. And I think this is awesome. This is amazing. Children need to learn that those people that say they are our representatives, they are selected tormentors. They are not representative of us, not at all. And it is absolute insanity for us to be going about and saying, I'm going to designate that person to represent me. You know what represent means, don't you? That means represent. They are going to represent their ideas as yours. 
So therefore, you are no longer of any kind of significance. And when you stop and think about that, none of them gives a shit about you. The hell? Why are we doing this? Why are we going and filling in that lovely little circle? Don't color outside the lines because they won't count it. Or pushing those buttons on that computer. Oh, that's a really fun game because you can push that button and intend for it to light up this little square over here and it lights up a completely different square. And you can go, that's not fair. Yeah, well, you signed up for it, dumbass. Or, oh, ooh, they give you a sharp implement and let you punch a hole. But don't hang Chad because Chad didn't do anything wrong. But if you hang Chad, they won't count that little hole you punched. And don't put your eye out either. <sighs> Apparently around 400 uh, water balloons were handed out along the pal- parade route by volunteers. <laughs> I so missed the good time. Damn it. Kyle, who was the driver, told Carolyn's Daily Times Herald only one group of people booed the float. And those are those demon crappies. You know, the perpetual butthurt ones. The ones that call out everyone else for all of the demonic stuff that they do. You know, those same ones that are pointing a finger not realizing that three other fingers are pointing back at them. Yeah, those people. Oh, wait, did I just point a finger? No. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. It was the middle finger. I'm showing them they're number one. Apparently, even the police and everybody else was positive about it. Why not? It's like, yeah, someone else is getting pelted, not me. Booyah. Huh. They couldn't get pictures with some people because of where they work or their political agendas, but only one group booed us. My consensus was that 99% to 1% liked it, which, hey, we are the 99%, and there's a 1% that's constantly butthurt, constantly whining, constantly saying that we are the bad guys because they stab us in the back, and we have the nerve to bleed on them. Damn it. Why do we do that? We're so freaking inconsiderate. Jeez. I think it's funny. I find it amusing. And I think we all need to laugh at their sorry asses. Because they are, every damn one of them, sorry asses. (sighs) Ha! Let me put this over in the RLM. What's that, Grimmy? Who's a notorious? Oh, well, thank you, RLM 45640. Okay, so that's, I'm not even going to add that one up because I have to think too. It's a cover story, Grim. Which one? Oh, thanks, hun. <laughs> Welcome aboard, RLM 45648. <laughs> yes, Grammy, I milked it. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> okay. And yeah, pigs are always harassing an old man that's just trying to get his... <laughs> I can't finish it, Grim. Uh, sorry. I, I just don't think I would be able to. You saw what? What'd you see? Nuh-uh. Were you peeking in my window, Cracker? (laughs) Oh, did you see that parade? How funny. That would have been hilarious. I would have... Oh, man. That would have been priceless. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Did I put that over on Facebook? Hi, Mark. I see you messing... Oh, holy crap, Anoli. I forgot to shut that off. Damn it. I hate when that happens. Okay, turn off that one, turn off that one. Okay, no more gadunkers. Okay, let me put shitlery over here. Um, yeah, I also have an article. I think I have it in my pocket. I don't know, I'll have to dig a bit. <laughs> it may take me a while. <laughs> Um, 
<laughs> oh, wow, Graham. Oh, man. You know what just popped through my head? I know it's scary. Shit just goes through there and it stops occasionally long enough for me to grab it and go, wow, I should just let that fall out my mouth. Um, <clears throat> oh, God, that sounded bad, too, because the thought I had in my head. <laughs> Hi, Maddie Clues. Welcome aboard, darling. How you doing? Um, yeah. When I said I couldn't finish that, and then I, I realized what the hell I was talking about, and it's like, oh, good Lord. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. My mind is officially in the gutter, probably for the rest of the night. Just warning you right here and now. So be prepared. Because, yeah, it's it's nowhere but downhill from here. <laughs> hey, it's Freaker Friday. What do you expect, okay? Um, okay, I got to share this over on Fakie Book. How do I want to put this? Um, let's see. <laughs> well, she needed a bath anyway. She was kind of reeking. Um, okay, there you go. Now... And did I put that over here? No, I didn't. Oh. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together, even when it's not planned. I still love it. Okay. Grammy, do we have any water balloon emoticons? Do I need to put you on that, hon? <laughs> I'm not wasting a good beer on that one. Okay, let's see. Do where's where? Where, oh, where are you doing that? Where'd that come from, sports fans? Huh? Yeah, I bet you didn't know there was going to be a quiz, did you? It's a pop quiz. <laughs> did you study? I know I didn't study the last time I had to do a P test, and oh, man, it just wasn't... Oh, well. Um... Okay, here we go. Here's an, Yeah, seeing as how my mind is already in the gutter, this is one Grimmy shared to me the other day, and I intended to get to it on um, Wednesday and spazzed it off. I know, you're shocked, right? It's like, wow, Grammy, how could you get mentally diverted? That's just so unusual. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, swampland. Yeah. <sighs> okay. This is from the dailymail.co.uk. Don't you know? Because they are just a snarky bunch. And, <laughs> well, it's on the internet, so it must be true. Right? Okay. Exclusive. I want to win a gold medal for sex. Really? They give out medals for that? Huh. <laughs> I'm not going to finish that thought. <laughs> I know where my mind was going, and I'm just not going to let it go there. <clears throat> this was a, uh, a Rio escort wants to use the games to find a boyfriend, just like Julia Roberts did in Pretty Woman. Honey, that was a movie. It wasn't real. Wow. It's amazing how many people go, but it happened on TV. It must be real. Ooh. Fluoride's working really well, in it? Yeah. Sitting on a bench bar beside a sweeping sands of Rio's Copacabana Beach, escort girl and sex worker Juliana calls the Olympic Games a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to make a big money and meet men from across the world, and catch multiple diseases. Yes, can we say, get the clap. Her skimpy bikini top, leaving little to the imagination, in, in other words, postage stamps. The dark-haired 23-year-old pouted her lips, scarred with pink, and declared, people will come to my city to win a gold medal at the Olympics. But for me, it will be the gold in my pockets that will make me a winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> Throwing back her head and laughing. Oh, I forgot to throw my head back. Damn it. Okay, see, that's why, yeah. 
That's why I just wouldn't be even good at that. I just forgot to throw my head back. Damn it. I want to be a gold medal winner of my business at the Olympics. But there is a lot of competition. A cucaracha, a cabracha. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Oh, wow. Damn. Whee. Okay, she's got curves. All over. Mm. Which is, okay. My gait don't swing that way, but I would much rather see someone that's curvy than than these little anorexic things that are wandering around all over the place. They make me want to forego my lunch and feed them. It's like, really? Seriously? Eat something. Ah! Juliana, whose working name for clients is Bruna. Oh, and she will ride your broom. <laughs> and sweep you off your feet. Um, she is one of an estimated 12,000 12,000 sex workers who are planning to target some 400,000 visitors expected in the Brazilian city during the Olympics and Paralympics in the coming days. Coming days. Yeah, that has a whole new meaning, doesn't it? Wow. 12,000. Wow. Honey, you're going to need a mattress on your back and roller skates on your feet and yell curb service. That's just all there is to it. And you still won't be able to keep up with the wee. Prostitution is legal in Brazil, but the authorities are expected to crack down, no pun intended, on Rio's famous sex trade. Yeah, right, sure you will. What, the only way you're going to crack down is you're going to go, you're going to give me a cut. Oh, I can see it now. However, Juliana is confident that this will not cause her or her colleagues any problems, but that annoying unsightly itch that you will acquire after the games <laughs> probably will cause you some discomfort. Just saying. Why should I worry about the police, she says. They are among my clients. Oh, well. <laughs> Is that a nightstick in your pocket or are you just glad to see me? <laughs> ah. To girls in Brazil, this is accepted by everyone. And it is an easy way to make money when it is very tough. There are few jobs in the city. Okay, how do you make money if there's few jobs? So where are these guys getting the money to pay you for your services? That's what I want to know. Everything is expensive and the economy is falling apart in Rio. Um, that's, that's happening everywhere, hon. She goes on to say, many, many girls here do it because it is the best way to earn fast money and often hard currency. <gasps> Pun intended. <laughs> All the girls I work with are very excited about the Olympics. It's an opportunity to make money and maybe find a way out of our life by meeting a boyfriend or a husband. I dream of meeting an athlete who could take me away from here. Only if you're really good at pole vaulting, honey. Then he might, yeah. Although she is pretty. She is a pretty young lady. So, hey, you know, kind of, okay, now the Laverne and Shirley thing it just popped into my head making my dreams come true hey you go for it darling and that bikini is not nearly as skimpy as some of the shit i see around here on people that are not nearly so well built so just putting that out there as well um <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Um, hi, Maddie. I see you over here in the UCY chat as well. Okay, let me put this over in the RLM chat just because... Cracker! I see you! I see London. I see France. I see her rearless underpants. There's lots of pictures where you can see... Okay, it's not her underpants, but... Uh, honey badger don't count? Oh. <laughs> Hi, 
Hans. How you doing, sweetie? Long time no harass. Oh, hey, her ass. And I just got done talking about her ass. Uh, no whammies. Oh. <laughs> okay. Y'all are just too funny. That's all there is to it. Um, <laughs> oh, crap. I got a lot of notifications over here on this FN site. Cool beans. Okay. Let me find my little voluptuous lady over here. Ta, 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 ta's are hanging out everywhere. Um, come on. Scroll, damn it. Scroll. <laughs> that's a, that's, yeah, that's what, um, the nerds and geeks say. Japanese say, focus, damn it, focus. Nerds and geeks say, scroll it, scroll it. Oh. Hmm. Hi, Katie. How you doing, sweetie? What you got to say, hon? I see you commented. <laughs> I don't know, Katie. I don't know of too many people that would not take a dump on their boss's desk, especially one that is a total pain in the ass. It's like, oh, you have been a pain in my ass for how long? Well, here, I'm just going to give you a dose of what you've been. <laughs> yeah. You've been hankering for it, darling. Here it comes. Although, yeah, that, that, what was that? Uh, I'm going to have to read it again so I can remember what that, because I got to remember that turn or that phrase, that something monkey, because <laughs> that, that's funny. I'm going to have to tell my grandkids that one, because <laughs> I'm that kind of Grammy. You know I am. Um, okay. Let's see. Back to my pocket I go, because I know there's more lint in there that I just got to dig out. Did you know that intelligent people tend to be messy, stay awake longer, and swear more? Damn, with as much swearing as I've been doing tonight, I must be frickin' Einstein. <laughs> That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Till someone tells me different, and then I'll just call a wambulance or a beerbulance. If I if I call a beerbulance, and pop a top, maybe they'll decide that I am just Einstein after about twenty beers. <laughs> oh well. <sighs> Were you annoyed as a kid when your parents told you to clean your room, sent you to bed early, and scolded you for cursing? Okay. Uh, first curse word I said in front of my mom. Mm, it was when she kicked me out of the house when I was 17 and I said shit. Because I really didn't know any other bad curse words. Because, yeah, can you say sheltered? Okay, I wasn't sheltered, but good Catholic girl. That pretty much applies. Uh, I outgrew it, but obviously. Um... Yeah, I got annoyed when mom would tell me to go clean my room and then she'd come in and check and found out I shoved everything under the bed. Don't you just hate when that happens? Although it worked really well when I became a mom because I knew exactly where to look. <laughs> oh, well, studies suggest that it can be linked to the an increase in your IQ. Now, I'm wondering, just, just throwing this out here, if maybe it was a slovenly, um, let's see, slovenly crude uh, person that came up with this. You think? Let's find out. You know, <clears throat> you always hear that people who swear have a limited vocabulary. Oh, no. Oh, no. My vocabulary is not limited at all, hun. As a matter of fact, I make up words just because. And y'all either get the gist or I explain it to you and then you go, holy shit, I did not see that coming. But if you think about it, those who don't use any swear words are the ones who limit their own vocabulary because they intentionally use fewer words than others. And I use swear words as punctuation marks. Sometimes you just got to drop an F-bomb to get someone's attention. And it works, for the most part. In fact, there is a study 
deconstructing that myth about curse words. The results showed that people who could name the most swear words within a minute also tend to score higher on an IQ test. The study concludes that a rich vocabulary of swear words is a sign of rhetorical strength rather than the attempt to hide verbal deficits, which, okay, uh, George Carlin comes to mind. Holy crap and holy, could that guy sling it? And I don't know of anybody that would say he was an idiot. Um, I personally think Robin Williams was brilliant and he could sling it just as well. There's an awful lot of comedians out there. Uh, Bill Hicks, extremely intelligent and used cursed words. So, and uh, I do believe that probably, oh, hey, wait a minute here. Let's see. Now, I'm just going to go on with this because, yeah, I see, now that I see there's some names listed here, I'll quit listing names. <clears throat> Intelligent people are night owls as well. Oh, yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. Um, messy, insomniac, um, grumpy people. That's what my brother said. In any case, um, if you like to stay up late, this could also be a sign for intelligence, which, mm, uh, mm, okay. Scientific research has linked night owls with higher IQs. For quite some time now, actually. Dangleberry, which really, seriously, okay. That man cannot put together five words without his teleprompter buddy. Without throwing in eight, 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 um, 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 eight, eight. No. Dangleberry is not intelligent. Dangleberry had a lot of really smart people take his tests for him. Although, would we even really know that scene as how nobody can see the records? Ooh, prove it, Dangleberry. Let's see. I'll go head to head on a little trivia game with you. And I bet I kick your ass ten ways from Sunday. And you cannot have any earbuds. You can't have little teleprompter friends giving you cues. Nobody else can be in the room. No little thing that flashes behind my head giving you the name, the answer or anything. Because I bet you I could whoop your ass in Trivial Pursuit. Because I have a trivial mind. <laughs> Oh, well, it also lists Charles Darwin, Winston Churchill, Keith Richards, and Elvis Presley, who are among the famous nocturnal, or uh, who are all famous for nocturnal activities. Well, okay, doing the horizontal mambo doesn't necessarily classify as something that uh, sit, just screams high IQ, unless that's what you scream at that moment, which most people go, oh God, and so those that are atheists go, oh me, but hey, if it works for you to scream out, high IQ, hey, it's okay, you know, if it works for you, hon, whatever floats your boat, okay? Um, a messy desk and intelligence go hand in hand as well, which, oh, wow, I just cleaned up my desk at work, finally, because everybody keeps piling shit on there. Why? Because I'm the one that gets stuck doing a lot of this shit, because it's like, oh, all right, give it to me, because I want it done right. Damn it. I'm one of those people, you know? I mean, I'll give you the dagger glare, and you'll pay for it later. But yeah, I'll do it just to get it done right so that I don't have you coming at me later with something that's totally fucked up and I have to fix your fuck up and then do it right again anyway. So just give it to me. I'll get it done right the first time and I don't have to fix your fuck up. Okay? Huh. So you swear a lot and stay awake late? Uh, yeah. Um, if you tend to leave bits of a mess behind, there's good news. A study by the University of Minnesota suggests that a messy desk or that the messy desk of geniuses is actually linked to their intelligence. If you don't spend much time cleaning and organizing everything around you, your mind is obviously occupied with more important stuff, which mine is usually occupied with, I don't want to clean house because it's nice outside, so I'm going to go out and play in my yard. 
pretty much. Or I'm going to go out and play with my puppies. Or I'm going to go talk to people or something like that. Because, yeah. I'll do the dishes later. <laughs> that's not top priority. <clears throat> but that's just kind of the way I am. I know I would make Beetle crazy. Which, where is, where is Beetle? I haven't seen him for a while. Grammy, where's he hiding? Oh, well. Back to this article. The study went on to show that a messy environment led to a more creative workflow, which, yeah, I can be quite creative in, in getting things done quickly if I know I've got company coming. It's like, holy shit, let's see how fast I can get the house whipped in shape. And how fast? Oh, damn, half hour? I can do this. <laughs> Apparently, psycho, um, psychological scientist Kathleen Vose says that disorderly environments seem to inspire breaking free of tradition. Okay, if that's your story. Which can produce fresh insights. Orderly environments, in contrast, encourage convention and playing it safe. Oh, that's not me. Nope. So, this is a good day for all the swearing, messy night owls amongst you. Yay! Well, you know, every day's a good day for me because, hey, I woke up and got out of bed without tripping over a fur baby. So, rest of my day is bonus round. Um, I already shared this over in uh, the UCY earlier today. Seen Beetle? Let's see... What was that? Was last seen one week and one day. Wow, Beetle, the hell. Seen Vince? Now, Vince was in earlier because he was giving me crap because I, I said the E word. <laughs> ha. Yeah. Oh, true, Maddie. True. You know, there are some things, and actually my mother, of course, I come by it honestly from my mother, because my mother has pictures everywhere. My mother's house is cluttered. It's clean, but it's cluttered. Um, and she knows where stuff is. Sometimes it takes her a while to find it, but she knows where it is. <laughs> and I can tell you where stuff is in my house, too. I know exactly the general area. <laughs> now, I know where my shit is. I just have entirely too much shit because I moved from a big house to a small house and I still have too much shit. But, um, oh, hey, Grimmy, see, that's why you're, you are the RLM god. You are Odin. You are the man. Not the man. You are the man. So, and not the as in D-U-H. Because that's Florida. I have to find a Florida story, don't I? I haven't done one for a while. Damn it. I hate when that happens. Okay, and I know I also shared that over on Fakey Book the other day because my brother Joey gave me shit about it. Because he said, yes, you are a messy and vulgar insomniac. And, uh, and to which I said, yeah, so want to make something of it? <laughs> the hell. If I got to be good at something, I'm going to be good at something that's fun. There you go. Um, I'm going to go back to my pocket now because I still have a few things that I wish to get to. Such as Breitbart.com, which, you know, Breitbart.com had so much promise. I really, really enjoyed it when Andrew was still alive. And then they took him out. And, uh, yeah, it went, as far as I'm concerned, to shit. They cover the safe stories, don't you know? But this is over on Breitbart.com. John Kerry said, oh, the horse's ass himself. It speaks. I am Mr. Ed. Oh, man, that's a slam to Mr. Ed. He's probably turning over in his grave right now. <clears throat> Climate change, as big a threat as Islamic State. If it comforts you to think that way, honey, you just need to quit talking with that horse's ass, okay? Because actually a horse's ass would look better, but... 
at an international meeting on global warming Friday, I'll bet you dollars to dog turds that he flew there in a private jet. Or if it wasn't in a private jet, it was probably big old 747 or some such nonsense. And he had this massive staff and he flew there so that he could give like a two hour speech and canoodle and canoiter around and then um, fly back and tell us that we need to stop driving our cars because carbon, CO2, climate change, climate change. Wow, it's what climate does. But I digress. The U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry compared the effects of climate change to the horrors of the Islamic State. Really? Well, seeing as how they're both figments of your imagination, and we're the ones that get to suffer the consequences of your imagination, <laughs> you're pretty much right there, hun. He suggested that the two pose an equivalent danger to the world's population. Oh, here we go. George's Guidestones. Do those pop into your head? I know they popped into mine just real quick. They went, Bleh. Yesterday, I met in Washington with 45 nations. Really? 45 nations? You moved all of that ground to D.C.? And the United States didn't flip over? You know, get a little heavy there? Or you guys didn't sink? You know that could happen to Guam if everybody moves to the side, moving along. He also spoke with defense ministers and foreign ministers. Hmm. So those are different from the regular ministers that have the little co white little divot thingy in their collar? Hmm. And as we were working together on the challenge of Daesh and ISIL, how many names you guys coming up with this shit? And terrorism. Ooh, ooh. Oh, Carrie said this at the Vienna summit. Okay, so I met in Washington with 45 nations. And then I went to a Vienna summit because they have sausage <laughs> and cookies. <laughs> oh, it's hard for some people to grasp it, but we, you are doing here right now is the equiv is equal importance because it has the ability to literally save life on the planet itself wow you know what could save life on the planet itself jeepers uh no more wars how about we take all of that budget from wars and put it towards oh let's see housing the homeless feeding the hungry, taking care of the sick and the elderly. Ooh, and wow, just for shits and giggles, how about we um, get rid of the federal government because y'all are just a bunch of leeches anyway. And ooh, wow, then we won't have any rules or very few. Damn, that would save life on earth, literally, because how many people are absolutely stressed out by your sorry asses? Uh, how many people do you kill? On a daily basis. Let's not even go annual. Let's just go daily basis because I'm sure it's in the double digits minimum. Triple digits. Quadruple digits. Well, let's just keep bumping that up there. Just add another zero behind it. Once you get so many zeros, oh, it just becomes an unreal number. People won't notice. Then we can just call it collateral damage. Yeah, just think of all of the lives you could save if y'all would stop chemtrailing our asses. Then, oh, wow, with that, we're not just talking humans. We're also talking animal life, which humans are animals, just in case y'all didn't get that memo. And plant life. Ooh, hey, all of that saved because you guys quit doing the chemtrail shit. Ah, bonus round. See, I've already fixed your problem. Shut up, John, and go away. Oh, he's not listening, is he? Apparently, Carrie's statement was all the more remarkable because... No hyperbole was intended. Hyperbole. So is that like a toilet that's ready for massive sewage? Because that's pretty much what DC is. He actually meant that reducing the world's use of hydrofluorocarbons, which he called exceptionally potent drivers of climate change. Okay, hydrofluorocarbons. Um, 
you know all that stuff, the chlorofluorocarbons and all that other fun stuff? So it, it's funny how they get up there and destroy the ozone layer. No, I'm, I'm still trying to figure this one out because how do they get up there when they're heavier than air? Answer me that one, Batman. Hmm. Bizarrely, which is a pretty good definition or description of Carrie, bizarre. Uh, he spoke these words in the midst of one of the most violent periods in the history of Islamic terror, which, okay, that's a label you threw on it, but I think we all know who's really behind that shit, don't we? Barely a week has passed since, oh, here we go, Muslim terrorists drove a truck through a Bastille Day celebration in Nice, France, mowing down children and men and women and leaving 84 dead and scores injured. Hyperbole? Thank you, Grammy. Maybe I wanted to say it weird anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> I'm I'm still just I'm terrified right now because of those Muslim terrorists that drove a truck through the Bastille Day celebration. <sighs> yeah. <clears throat> I don't doubt that people were killed. I really don't. I don't because to me every time this shit happens, I know they killed people because you got to have a blood sacrifice. That's the way they work. They have to have that blood sacrifice. It gives them power. But it did not go down the way they said it went down. Huh. The Islamic State celebrated particularly Bloody Month. Okay, so the, is the Islamic State a party now? Kind of like the Rebloodlican Party and the Demon Crap Party? They celebrated... Oh, and it was a bloody month of attacks during the Muslim holy season of Ramadan. Ramadan, 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 good. Yeah, they go, which ran from June the 5th to July the 5th. Boasting that it was responsible for 5,200 people being killed or wounded in military operations during the sacred time. Okay, how many of those people are real Muslims? That's what I want to know. How many of those people are not CIA operatives? That is probably an even smaller number. Instigated by an Islamic state called to jihad, Muslim terrorists carried out targeted, um, carried out targeted deadly attacks. Targeted, okay, lots of dids there. In Orlando, Afghanistan, Kenya, Lebanon, Istanbul, Bangladesh. Now, you note, this. okay, this is supposedly a Muslim terrorist group, correct? Correct me if I'm wrong. That's what it's supposed to be, right? Muslims hate Jewish? Correct me if I'm wrong. How come there's not been any attacks in Israel? Inquiring minds want to know. I mean, you would think that would be the, the one that they'd want to get, wouldn't you? Ooh, la 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 la. Let's take out Israel. No, they go to Orlando or Afghanistan, which is Muslim. Or Kenya or Lebanon or Istanbul or Bangladesh. Hmm, how many of those are Muslim? Secretary Kerry went on to explain why climate change is just as dangerous for world security as the terrorists behind these heinous crimes. You know why it's just as dangerous to world security? Because of their their definition of the world, their one world government that is reliant on uh, big oil, petrodollar, National security can't have a car that gets 100 miles to the gallon because that'll fuck with our national security because we are very secure when we're getting money from all of that oil. You know, one other thing that a lot of people may not know is in the United States, we do produce quite a bit of oil. We really do. My ex um, actually worked and actually still does work in the oil patch. So I kind of sort of know a little bit about this after 30 years of being around it all the time. And um, 
Yeah, the United States produces quite a bit of oil. We actually produce almost enough for us to just take care of ourselves to where we would not have to import at all. And yet, we import. And we sell what we produce overseas to Europe or Japan, you know, because OPEC sets the price. And, well, we can sell it overseas and make a bigger profit than if it was here. You know, it's kind of like the interstate transportation fee on natural gas or water or any of that other, or electricity. We got a lot of wind farms out here in Kansas. A lot of wind. You know why? Because it's hot. It's so freaking hot here. We have fans outside. But <clears throat> that electricity is not used for the most part in the state of Kansas. No, it's shipped to um, Oklahoma, Texas, Nebraska, neighboring states. Why? Because they can charge an interstate transportation fee. Natural gas, we have one of the largest natural gas fields in the world here in the state of Kansas. And do we use any of that natural gas? No. As I was told by someone who works for the gas company or actually retired from the gas company because I asked him that very same question, he said, oh, our natural gas isn't very good. It doesn't have very good BTUs. And I said, well, then why are you uh, drilling for it? Why are you bringing it out of the ground? And he said, oh, we sell it to Wyoming and Montana. And I went, oh, oh, okay. So where do the natural gas that you guys burn for us here, where does that come from? Wyoming and Montana. It's a game. It's a game. And uh, they are writing the rules. And those rules don't apply to them because the rule writers never write rules to apply to themselves. They always write rules to apply to those that are not rule writers. Funny how that works, isn't it? Hmm. Oh, well. Sidetracked. This goes on to say, these words came just two days after a group of climate scientists released findings that one of the most cited examples of accelerated global warming, the Antarctic Peninsula, had nothing to do with human behavior whatsoever, but was entirely consistent with natural climate variability. No! Oh, wait. No, don't tell them. Don't tell them sunspot activity actually has an awful lot to do with it as well, because, wow... They had this whole thing set up to charge us for carbon credits. Another bada bing, bada boom, cha ching. Yeah. Sorry. We may be dumb, but we ain't stupid. I know it's a very fine line differentiating between those two, but still. Goes on to say, moreover, the scientists also found that the warming trend had naturally reversed itself 20 years ago. And for the early years of the 21st century, the peninsula has in the main been cooling. Uh huh. The Secretary's speech also followed hard on the heels of another report released by EcoWatch revealing that livestock emissions bovine flatulence <laughs> are more dangerous for the environment than the combined output of planes, trains, and automobiles. So, if your cow has gas, if your pig has gas, you're damaging the environment. It's probably because it's methane release. <laughs> Besides the fact that it's noxious as hell. And if you talk to farmers and ranchers around my neck of the woods, they'll tell you, that's the smell of money. Yeah, well, I say it needs to be laundered. Whew! It reeks. Huh. Simply through the normal biological process, the article stated that cows produce a remarkable 14.5 to 18% of the global total of greenhouse gases. 
more than the transportation sector of the entire planet, which, hey, you want to know a way to be able to, oh, recycle those gases? Plant a tree. Or better yet, better yet, because trees have a much longer, okay, they have a nice long life cycle, but it takes them quite a while to get to maturity. Let's grow hemp. How about that? Or let's also grow its uh, fun cousin. <laughs> there you go. That'll cure a lot of what ails us in more ways than one. It goes on to say that although Secretary Kerry undoubtedly intended to no disrespect to the families of the thousands of victims who have died at the hands of Islamic terrorists slash al Qaeda. His words make a mockery of their deaths. Uh, anybody in D.C. that talks about that shit is making a mockery of anything they talk about. And I'm making a mockery of them. So, there you go. What goes around comes around. He evidently or his evident in inability to evaluate the relative danger of America's enemies and those of the planet suggests that the end of his tenure as Secretary of State cannot come too soon. And see, this is where I have a real problem with Breitbart, because Breitbart called everybody bullshit. Everybody. Breitbart didn't fall for this crap. I've I've got Andrew's book, actually, and I've listened to an awful lot of his interviews, and he called everyone out, and he would not have pussyfooted with this, and he would not have swallowed this shit, this slop that these people have been throwing in the propaganda trough. Come one, come all. It's an all-you-can-eat trough. Mmm, nummy. How's your propaganda taste today? I like mine. Well done. Yes. It's rather odiferous, if you ask me. Wash it down with some Fool Aid? Yeah. You go right ahead there, darling. <sighs> if Breitbart were alive, he would call bullshit on the Islamic State. He would call bullshit on climate change. He would call bullshit on Sean Hannity. He would call bullshit on everybody, which is why they took him out. Plain and simple. So I'm going to go ahead and share this so you can see how many times I totally fee in my trying to read this. Um, Uh-oh, cowboy. Extra Zika, please. Oh, now, you know, and I keep seeing all this shit of Zika virus, Zika virus, Zika virus. You know, it makes you want to go rick em, rack em, ruck em, ruck em, get that ball and really fuck em. But <clears throat> it's not a virus. It's not. I refuse to believe that it is a virus. I think it is a poison. There is a difference. So, and I think a lot of the children that they are blaming Zika virus for their birth defects, their deformities, they are birth defects because of the fucking poison you guys have been putting into their water and you've been treating the crops with. It's not a virus. I don't believe it's a virus. And I will say that to my dying breath because I think it's all bullshit. Every damn bit of it. And skeeters, yeah. There's a skeeter on your Peter Flake it off. You know, there's a, uh, where was it? I saw a meme not too long ago. Um, when, when you have a mosquito land on the end of your penis, you realize that not all problems can be saved with or served with violence. <laughs> yeah, smack that bad boy. Let's see you. Come on. Go for it. Ow. That's what's called a wax job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. I think that would hurt really bad. I don't have one of those things, but I would think that would hurt really bad. Oh my God. Cracker said, God. That's true, Tomato Tomato. You can track government lies since DC was created. And actually, the... um. 
Yeah, the Constitution, it was being subverted before the ink was even dry. I don't think they'd even, well, you know, it had to be ratified and everybody had to make their own little tweaks and changes, which is fine. You know, that's what you're supposed to do with that shit. Um, but yeah, Carrie is a mess. Carrie would look, I really do think that Carrie would look a lot better if you just put the pants over his head and let his ass hang out because it would probably talk the same too. Probably not nearly so many noxious fumes coming out of it either. Okay, let me see. I got a notification over here. Yes. What did I do this time? <laughs> did I have fun? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I see how you guys are. You're all going bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> yeah, that lovely lady from Rio de Janeiro. Ay, caramba. Okay, let me see what else. Hi, Bobby. How you doing, sweetheart? How's things going in Colorado, by the way, sweetie? Um, are they progressing quite well? I would like to know because once you get the place, you know, to where you can have company, I'm coming to visit. I mean, it, it's about a five hour drive, but I could, I'll come visit you. Um, okay. Now, where was I at? I have got, I've got to find Florida. I haven't done Florida. And you know, Oopie's got to, no, no, I'm just going to do a search. You know, I haven't gone to Twitter yet today. Well, I did earlier today, but I haven't gone to retweet because I have too many links open. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to go directly to Florida. Do not pass go. Do not collect. Well, I'd collect $200 if someone would give it to me and I didn't have to do nothing in return. Kind of shameless like that. Okay, let me see. The Sun Sentinel. Here we go. Um... Okay, there's the mafioso men. Okay, uh, okay, I gotta go here because this one just looks okay. This is from the Sun Sentinel in the Florida blog. In life, sometimes you're a hammer, and other times you're a nail. So did this guy get pounded? Having a parking feud? It's hammer time. Okay, I'm grooving now, but it's hard to read when I'm grooving. Juan Mon Monsalvo Hernandez, a roofer, is accused of beating a man with a hammer for blocking the space he usually parks in. This is according to his arrest affidavit um, that was reported in the Daily Commercial in Leesburg. This isn't the way most folks get hammered. No, usually there's an alcoholic beverage involved or <laughs> it's something to do with the horizontal mambo. Hernandez denied using the hammer, according to the Leesburg cops. Next time someone needs to get a handle on life, consider something other than a hammer. Really? Maybe you need a hammer. Maybe someone just needs to be pounded. Maybe you just need to... Oh, there we go. Working our way down into the gutter again. That was that was a quickie. <laughs> um Hey there, Miss Beth. Uh da da And Cowboy's back. Yippee -yay, yay, cow buddy. I'm so glad you're back, sweetheart. And do you know why? Because you say I have a pleasant voice. <laughs> Boy, do I have you snowed. <laughs> okay. Um, well, that didn't fan out too well. So I think I'm going to go to Fark. Fark off. Because I like Fark. I would go to Crack, but oh, hey, hey, hey. And guess what? Second thing down is from Florida. 
murder suspect fleeing cops gets taken out by officer's glass door. I have seen this. Okay, I have to admit, I have done this. <laughs> if you ever have in one of those days where you're feeling really dumb, I've been one of those people that has pulled on a push door. <laughs> I will admit it. I've had those moments. And usually people around me just laugh their ass off. And this is another one. A Hernando murder suspect believed to have shot a man at the Holiday Inn Express is captured at Pasco. She looks miffed. I don't think she's happy. I need a 1-800 number, Hans. <laughs> I've been told I need a 1-900 number. <laughs> Although you would, yeah, if I had one of them numbers, you'd be so screwed. <laughs> oh, Hans. I had a Skype number, but then I just let it expire. Cause which I also have a Google number, but I, I, need to, I need to get with Grimmy and we need to work out the kinks on that. See if I can do that for the radio. Because that would be kind of fun. In any case, uh, in Brookville, down in Florida, in the Lando Lakes, not where the butter comes from, I'm going to assume, Hernando County Sheriff's Office says that a man found dead in a hotel parking lot early Thursday morning was murdered by a woman he met a few hours before. Ah, yeah, see, be careful who you hook up with, peeps. Sheriff... Al, Sheriff Al, because I'm not even going to butcher that last name, said that Georgia resident Jeffrey Lott was staying at the Spring Hill Holiday Inn Express. Apparently, he was trying to get an express job. He was staying there for work, and he went out Wednesday evening. He went to a lollipop, lollipop, oh, lolly, 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 lollipop. Lollipop, it's an adult entertainment club off US-19 in Pasco County, where he was wanting to get his lollipopped. <laughs> it's one of those nights. <laughs> oh, Hans. <laughs> Flattery will get you almost everywhere, hon. Almost. <laughs> oh, the sheriff said that he met um, Kayla Brianne Evelyn Lucille Collins. Okay, let's see if I can say this with it, because it's it sounds like I should have her to it. Kayla Brianne Evelyn Lucille Collins, who is twenty three, and a few of her friends were there too. Woohoo! I'm thinking he was going. Oh yeah, bonus round. <laughs> They decided to leave the club and head to the local Denny's because big spend nothing says big spender like taking your date to Denny's. <laughs> Whew. Sheriff Al said that Lot asked Collins to drive his truck since he had been drinking. They stopped at an ATM. <clears throat> wrong answer. And then drove to the Holiday Inn Express where Lot was staying. They ended up back at the Holiday Inn Express where he was shot several times and she left with his vehicle. And, uh, yeah, because they went to an ATM and he was drunk. And so she got his money and got his truck and got rid of him. So, hey, I'm thinking she was probably thinking bonus round. I got paid. I got a ride and I didn't have to put out. There's some people that think like that. Apparently, um, Lot was shot five times in the midsection. Oh, man. That's not... Ow. I, I've heard that's quite painful. I have never been shot, and I really don't care to be. Uh, I've had to deal with pricks. Shots. <laughs> but never that kind. In any case, Collins then drove Lot's truck to Denny's to meet her friends. Because, you know, it really works up. But nothing works up an appetite like robbing someone blind and killing them it just really man i could go for that super trucker special right about now i am just start 
Wow. She later dumped the truck at a vacant property in Pasco County at Peace Boulevard. <laughs> I'm thinking that's kind of along the same lines as uh, Dangleberry getting the Nobel Peace Prize. Yeah, not a very peaceful boulevard. Unless it's P-I-E-C-E -E and somebody got a piece. But <clears throat> the Hernando County deputies found Lot's truck and some of his belongings and were then able to track Collins down to the Newport Ritchie. Uh, their Pasco County deputies took her into custody after a brief pursuit ended with Collins running uh, face first into a sliding glass door. Now see, it took this long to get to that. Damn it. That, is there a Kodak moment on this? I'd love to see that smooshed look. According to the Pasco officials, when units responded to the home or to a home on the 7200 block of Abington Avenue, um, let's see, da, 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 another resident at the home told them Collins was in the house. Ah, well, at least they got her. They don't know what the motive was behind the shooting. But not unlikely it was Roberty. Well, dang, give that man a bubblegum cigar. Jeepers, I wonder if he cusses. He's so smart. Really? Oh, well. You know what? I am just about out of time. Holy smokes, Batman, this evening has just flown by. Wowzer. Huh. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair, by the way, over here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3. Also on the Real Liberty Media Spreaker Channel, the RLM TuneIn Channel, and the RLM Internet Radio Channel. And be sure to either come back or stick around, because it's in a couple of hours. Grammy and Moose Girl will be on with the Freakers Ball tonight for a freaktastic time tunes and conversation and maybe is this a solomon night i feel like solomon tonight solomon tonight is this a solomon night grammy i'll wait for your answer i'll just sit here and groove for a while um let's see what else shall i do should i find something should i find a quickie <laughs> One more quickie for you. And then I will have to say my adiosos and arrivederci and all that other fun stuff. Get the hell out of the road so I can get some stuff done. There you go. Um, oh, yeah. Here's one. Let's just piss you off at the end, shall we? Although, yes, please continue on to this place. Yes, thank you very much. This is from the palestinechronicle.com. Um, I saw this earlier today and I went, what the fuck? Apparently, Google is removing Palestine from its maps, and it, which is negating Palestinian history. This is dated from yesterday. Yeah, it did go really fast, didn't it, cowboy? This is a quickie here. So, Google has removed the name of Palestine from its Google Maps and replaced it with Israel. Oh, no, they spell it differently, but it's still Israel. This is a decision that's denounced by Palestine or Palestinian Journalist Forum. No shit. In a statement released yesterday, the forum said that Google's decision was made on the 25th of July. Oh, my mother will be ever so pleased. That's her birthday. She will tell you to go fuck yourself. And it's part of the Israeli scheme to establish its name as a legitimate state for generations to come and abolish Palestine once and for all. Fuck you who? It added the move is also designed to falsify history, geography, as well as the Palestinian people's right to their homeland. I'm thinking everybody needs to share this little piece of butt nugget tree all over the place. Let's make this some bitch go viral because this is total bullshit. So now that I have gotten that out of my system, I uh, hope you all stick around for later on tonight. Yeah? Okay, cool. It is a Solomon night tonight. Woo-woo! So I will have to uh, stay up. Damn it. Not so damn it. Okay. Tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock Eastern Time will be Solvenor with the Solvenor event over on uci.tv. 
Flash and I will be on directly following Salvador with the Dork Table over here on RLM Channel 3. So come on over and have a grand old time with us. Yeah, we will have some dorkulicious good times. <laughs> or something. <laughs> um, tomorrow afternoon at, is that 3 o'clock? Or is it 4 o'clock? Eastern. I always get, I always go by my time zone because my time zone is set with the universe. Um, we'll be Kira with the bridge here on RLM Channel 3. And then tomorrow evening, 8 o'clock Eastern time is Bo Diddy with some bodacious tunage. Then Sunday morning, morning for me, noon Eastern time is Grimner with a bunch of the blues to bring you into Hal Anthony and he's going to take yo ass behind the woodshed to open up a can a whoop ass so be sure to check back often this weekend because there's all kinds of good stuff coming up i will be back on wednesday for a wackadoodle wednesday edition of grammy's rocket chair but until then y'all have an absolutely awesome rest of your evening and a totally splendiferous weekend i know i'm going to because it's not going to be 